over easy with hosts Mary Martin and Jim Hartz. Thank you. Hello and welcome once again to Over Easy. If you ever wanted to meet someone whose excitement and curiosity about life were irresistible, today's the day. I've had the privilege of knowing Dorothy Hammerstein, also known as Mrs. Oscar Hammerstein II, for over 40 years. And this special lady will be with us in just a moment. Right, and we're also going to talk to over-easy nutritionist Dr. Marion Nessel. Mm -hmm. Today she's going to clear up some of the confusion swirling around all the additives in the processed foods that are available to us. But now I'm pleased and proud to share with you my beloved friend, Dorothy Hammerstein. <laughs> Dorothy, welcome. welcome. Jim, you can't imagine what this means. We've, we've known each other such a long time, and we've talked about doing something together yes. someday, and yes. at long last, it's happened. Yes. You know, Dorothy, what did you think about me when you first met me? I just thought you were gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm only... I think I saw you when you sang, My Heart Belongs to Daddy. No. Oh, yeah, it wasn't that... No, no, oh, you see... Me in the drawing room at in home. In your home. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what I wanted to talk yes. to you about. Well, I because guess I was just nervous. No, because yeah. we met back in almost 1937 or 8. Yes. And that's a long time back. But then back. you always had to wish and hope that any girl that Oscar would want for a show is so divine that the whole public would rush to see it. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty scary for a wife, isn't it? <laughs> but Dorothy, so I'd look at you very carefully. I know you did, and, and I, I thought I'm you going, were nice. You did, because mm -hmm. I was absolutely terrified of you. I came straight out of Weatherford, hillbilly mm -hmm. with, you know, hay hanging out of my hair, and they said I was to have an audition in a private home in Beverly Hills. I went to the home, they opened the door, and there this beautiful, gorgeous lady with auburn hair and the brightest blue eyes I have ever seen in my life, and it was you, and you were serving tea to a group of a lot of men in a, a beautiful drawing room. So I came in, and I thought, oh, I can't sing for that lovely lady. She, she I, it won't be good enough for that lady. So what happened was, I said, well, this man stood up, and he said, uh, he, he became about six feet six, this man who was sitting down, and this marvelous face, and he said, uh, well, you're here to sing for us, would you start? So I did, and I sang a blues song, and then I sang a rhythm song, and then I stopped and said, I would li now like to sing in my soprano voice. I would like to sing Indian Love Call. You probably don't know about it, but that's the name. So I proceeded to sing Indian Love Call, and when I'd gone, ooh, 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 you know, all those things, this dear man got up again and smiled rather dearly, and he took me into the hall, and he said, I want to help you. <laughs> I'm going to teach you some things. And he said, and by the way, I know Indian Love Call. I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oscar Hammerstein. Oscar Hammerstein. <laughs> That's right. Dorothy, let me ask you this. <clears throat> you, and, you and your husband came from much different backgrounds. You were an actress. You came from Australia. Yeah. How did you ever meet and, and uh, then go on to marry Oscar Hammerstein, who was such a famous uh, and well-known man at the time. Yeah. How did you get together? I met him on a ship going to England, mm -hmm. going from New York to London. And I didn't take any notice of him at all. <laughs> and the next morning, I was up early and we're walking around the deck, and he was walking around the deck the other way. Now I said, good morning. He said, good morning. So you do it again, and you say, good morning again. And I thought, oh, this is awful. <laughs> How many times do you say good morning to people? So I thought, I'm going to sit down. So I sat down mm -hmm. on one of those long deck chairs. Mm -hmm. And he came and sat on the end of the deck chair. And he said, eh, if you were a little girl and I was a little boy, I'd carry your books home from school. Oh, isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Imagine, no one ever said that to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened. That's what happened. That was the beginning. And that was the beginning. Yes. And then you finally did marry and yes. you had children. We had a child, yes. A child, a yes. son. And uh, then you, you also now have, wh how many grandchildren? Ten. Ten grandchildren and, Ten. and how many great-grandchildren? Two great-grandchildren. Two great-grandchildren. Yeah. Isn't that fabulous? Quite an offspring. And they're all talented, too. Dorothy, let me ask you this. When you, when you met 
and married Oscar, he was at one of the peaks in his career. Yes, he was riding showboat. Mm -hmm. He was just finishing showboat. Then he went through, and you talk about this in some of your own writings, a long dry spell in the 30s before Oklahoma. He was yes, in Oklahoma yes, and, and yes. made his big comeback. Yes. What was it like being with, with a, a great artist at that time when he, when he just It was the same. Came? It was just being married. That's all somebody you like being married to. I mean, I don't think men change well, what their business is, uh, whether they're being a success or not success. If you're some, married to somebody that you, that you love, well, you're just wishing they'd have better luck or uh, something better would happen, but it certainly isn't tough. But also, before the lean years, he'd had the huge, long, uh, successful years with Romberg. Oh, yes. And with Jerome and, Kern. And Jerome Kern. And, and then, he was very, and then very he had successful. The lean, then he had the lean years. But during the lean years, you helped out. You became, didn't you become oh, an Oh, I didn't do it for any reason. I did it because we were in Beverly Hills. And what do you do in Beverly Hills? <laughs> uh, you just can't go to women's places for lunch and, and, and play bridge and, and talk a lot of nonsense about them the curtains in the powder room or something, you know, you never know <laughs> what they, well, each year was a different thing they had in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so I started accidentally decorating. Mm -hmm. And then became a very yes, famous decorator. Yes, yes, And I you still lovely, are. I had a big shop too. Mm -hmm. It was nice, very nice. Did you ever help Oscar make the decisions about which show he would produce or, or what he would... Uh, no. You never no, did? No, except I d did... Uh, this might take a few minutes. Well, that's Dad, all right. We have it all right. Be sure. Uh, I was walking down the street once, and and Miss uh, Miss Penny Holson said she's a lawyer, Gertie Lawrence's lawyer, mm -hmm. and she said, "Why don't the boys do something for Gertie?" And I said, "Why should they do anything for Gertie? She wants a hundred percent of everything." <laughs> so uh, she she said, "I'll send you a book to read." So she sent me a book to read. And it was about a, a marvelous story about a woman that was Jewish that was married to somebody in Germany, and um, and she, but she was trying to sabotage the Germans mm -hmm. for the for the Allies, mm -hmm. and so she sa it sounded wonderful for a while till the very end. I thought, no, that's not good. He won't end up being a nurse in a ghetto or anything. So so I sent that back, and I so she, then she sent me the King and I or the Anne and the King of Siam. And I thought, well, I've read it, but I'll read it again. And I read, and I, and I took it to Oscar, and I said, you have to read it yourself this time, because I think you could. And he did read it, and they did, and he talked to Dick, and they did do it. The, and they did the King yes, and I, they did. which is yes. still being played by Mr. Yul Brynner. Yes, yes. And making lots and yes, lots of money for yes, everybody concerned. Yes. <laughs> he runs and runs and runs with it, doesn't he? Yes, he does. It's he, made he, him. He is the king now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Have you ever, uh, well, we, then he, we, well, he did before, uh, after that, with Sound of Music, and that was, yeah, that was our the, last show. Yeah, yes. Our last show yeah, with yes, our right. darling Oscar, who yes. left. Did you ever, ever contemplate remarriage? No. Never? Never. Because a lot of people do marry quickly, you know. Uh, and, yes, you know. well, I'm, I don't really, I, I'd rather, I know some women have to get married. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get married. I. I think I'm self-sufficient, and I think I'm I'm fussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had a very special yes, life. Yes, it would be right. very you difficult. Tell me this: How do you, you? I understand you have quite a regiment, physical physical regimen. You stay. I had what? Physical regimen. How do you stay in shape? Do you exercise oh, you, and swim. Oh well, I only swim if possible. I used to have massage a lot, but but I swim whenever I can. I only do the breaststroke, though. I can't do the Australian crawl. <laughs> you well, used no, to. I am Australian. I can't do the Australian crawl. And you crawl. do, t don't you do 10 laps? Yes, I she do. She does, yeah. I told you 10 she laps did. a day. I try to do 32. Well, really? You, you, yeah. look, you look wonderful. Yes, sir. We have another guest that we want to uh, talk to, but would you stay for a few moments? And, I'd love and I to. think that yes. we may get Mary to sing a oh, song I'd to I'd love you. to. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hammerstein. <laughs> It's a fitting footnote to Maria's story to, uh, to tell you that it's still being told. To this day, visitors to Maria's Pueblo can still find her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren producing those beautiful pieces that she helped to pioneer mm -hmm. in every regard. Hers is really a living yes. le legacy. Mm -hmm.
I'm glad we still have a few minutes left because I know that you and Dorothy Hammerstein aren't quite through. Yet. No, we have a little <laughs> bit more to talk about before we leave. Dorothy, could you tell the story of a special poem that Oscar wrote for you and, and uh, just for you, and later uh, uh, it was done, you did it in Needlepoint yes. in 1939, I yes. think. Yes, as well, a present for him. Could you yes. tell me that story? Yes, I tell you, darling, I don't think he wrote it for me. He, he, he might have written it for me, but not to me. Uh, I think he saw these old couple on the beach of Santa Monica uh -huh. walking, holding hands at the end of the day. And he wrote this uh, song, and he was, it was going to be in the show that Jerry Kern was doing with him, doing the music. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't in the show, but Jerry did write the music, mm -hmm. and it wasn't in. So I said, it's terrible, that's a lovely song, and I'm going to do it and I'm going to sew it. So I sewed it, and it, it, it. it's not needlepoint, it's... Uh, what it is, isn't? No, it's... it's Petit point. No, it's that crisscross stuff. Old cross stitch? No, not cross stitch. Oh, it's a... It's, um, Cruel? No. No. It's, it's the thing children used to do. That was the first thing I ever sewed, you see. Tapestry stitch? The tapestry stitch? Yes, yes it, it's what children do. It, it's a, a thing that they used to put their name and went how old well, they were. Well, it's a sampler. A sampler. A sampler. <laughs> that's but, what but it that's is. But that's a needle point. That's what well, they oh, oh, yeah. Here it is. Well, you, you do it with a needle, now, yes. I, I brought it because yeah. you did something so darling for me. You gave it to me. Yes, you I know I did. Me after, Oscar, after, after Oscar died. Yes, you did, and you gave it to me, and I cherish it. So I brought it today for you to see. We framed it much nicer than that. Well, I, I love it. And here it is, and it says, Words by O.H., stitched by his loving wife, Dorothy D.H., October 1939. And I found the music, the original music, the sweetest sights that I have seen and in my house recently that Jerry Kern wrote, because they gave it to me, so I want to sing it for you. Is that all right? Yes, it will be. Oh, wonderful. lovely. I just adore to do it. <laughs> Across an evening sky, I have seen divine unspoken words shining in a lover's eye. I have seen moonlight on a mountain top, silver and cool and still. I have heard church bells faintly echoing a distant hill close enough to beauty I have been but in all the whole wide land here's the sweetest sight that I have seen one old couple walking hand in Oscar also wrote four or five lines for me in The Sound of Music, which I adore. And uh, they're just what I mean and we all mean to each other. And they go like this. A bell is no bell till you ring it. A song is no song till you sing it. And love in your heart wasn't put there to stay love isn't love till you give it away a bell is no bell till you ring it a song is no song till you sing it and love in your heart wasn't put there to stay love is it love till you give it away ah oh, daddy yeah, I love you so I do love you so. Well, 
that's special in our lives. We've had the loveliest life, Dorothy and I. And we're, you know, we're not young anymore, but we feel young. Yes, <laughs> Don't we you feel young? Dorothy, it's been a real inspiration having Thank you, you with us here much. today. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hammerstein. <laughs> come back to see us and we hope all of you will for now bye bye from bye. all of us from here on over easy <laughs> Thank you.